Welcome to the Jetto Car Cup Series. It is Season 9, Round 13, and we are here in Monza for what should be a very exciting playoff race. Dr. Pepper playoff race. I'm not going to let that go. I think that's a brilliant name for it. I am your commentator, Owen Wyatt. With me, I have got Jess. We are going to be watching Jacko hopefully crash and burn in his race. He's abandoned us in the comms once again. Second week in a row as well. Well, technically he was comms last week, but he was he was driving at the same time as well. But hello, M Monza, always a recipe for chaos. But also, also some last minute battles. We saw JB Griffiths won one year by a close margin as well. We've seen Jake win last season as well. He's on his joker tonight, so I would expect him to be one of the contenders to win this one after a great race from him last season. Yeah, winning, as you say, last season. But Jacko did put a, a decent wee stat, actually, into the group chat earlier on. This is um, a track which has never had a repeat winner, and it has appeared on every single Jacko card calendar so far. The winners here, Pete, OKK, Arnide, Jamie Griffiths, uh, Corey, and a definitely not fixed win for Gareth, then obviously Ben Shaw and Jake last season. Jake, as you say, is on a joker. Yuri is the other man on a joker, so... I suppose we have to look at him, possibly, to make it 9 out of 9. Yeah, potentially. I ho ho Hopefully it will be 9 out of 9, because otherwise it would be... It'll be quite boring if someone goes and repeats the win around um, Monza, of course. But Yuri has done well in Monza in the Kia series, of course. But obviously we're not in Kia, we're in Cup. And... I, I, I probably would expect Corey to be up there as well. Corey had a bit of a shocker in qualifying last week, but it was a dry to wet quali, so it was to be expected, of course. Stages tonight, you can blame uh, Kieran for stage one, Quinn for stage two. Stages are lap 12 and 22 tonight, so that's going to be quite an ending to tonight's series cut race. So uh, if you're wondering why 22 is the second stage, you can blame Quinn. Yeah, that is a, an interesting number, really, isn't it? Because that's going to create a lot of uh, late drama, especially if we have any sort of safety car involvements. So we will uh, keep our eye on this, as Risky is the first man out onto the track, which is Ron, but why is he out so early? He's meant to be out at 12 minutes 30, according to my graphic. That's what I thought. Yeah. It was meant to be Jacko <laughs> out first. Yes. Jacko is now coming out. Um, a little bit... Well, he's come out somewhat on time for him, but uh, J Jacko is supposed to be the first man on the lap, and he's already gone off at turn one, locking those front tyres up nicely. Not exactly the ideal start, but uh, yeah, Risky has sort of got this a bit wrong. I, I assume he will do his lap anyway, but I'm sure Jacko's going to have something to say about it. He perhaps would get away with it if he came back into the pits and came back out when he's meant to, but I'm sure he's just not realised that he's not meant to be out at this time. But we'll follow him, because I'd be surprised if he bolted back into the pits. He must have just made a mistake, so... Uh, the Jack first man... Again. Oh, has he? Oh, dear. Has he got a default setup on or something? That's screaming, uh... Oh, is he pitting actually, Risky? Okay, Risky is pitting. That's good. I think Jacko's good. told him because they're probably yeah. in the party together. Yeah, that'll, speed, that'll, be why, <laughs> that'll be why he's parking now, Jacko. He must be on PlayStation chat or something. And uh, he'll get back onto track now. So that, that I reckon that'll avoid a penalty there for... Because uh, there's no harm done, really. He'll come out at the right time later on. What Jacko's done there, though, it means that uh, when Baza gets his uh, lap in. We're barely going to see any of it because <laughs> Jack was taking so long on his light lap. So we'll we'll give Baz a little bit of screen time now while we can see him. And uh, he loves his uh, lime green, doesn't he? The sort of brawn GP colour. He's got it in uh, in sort of metallic this week and it's uh, another banner from him. He has some very nice liveries but yeah, I don't think we're going to see too much of him in this qualifying lap because we've got to give the league owner his dues. He's very much been looking to race as much as he can this season. I think I think he knows himself he's probably not going to get much time on track next season in the final Jetto car season. He'll want to be in the comms. I'm making him sit in the comms. So Do it. <laughs> yes, let, let's go for a lap then. We'll ride on board with Jacko down towards the first very heavy braking zone of the track. Hopefully Jacko's got his tyre... Uh, no, he hasn't. He's not got his brake pressure right. He's locked up into turn one. 
that must be genuinely like 70% fronts or something. He's like put the wrong default setup on, so that's already about a second loss because you lose so much for the apex when you don't hit it, and so much for the exit when you uh, come off turn one slows. So that's already a pretty horrific first sector for Jekko. Locking those fronts up again into the chicane at four and five. So he's basically been this lap off, really, hasn't he? I, he must know how to change his, his brake pressure. But, uh... You can change it on the fly as yeah. well. Um, but, uh, but probably he was get, going to get a self on, then he saw Risky go out, and he was like, uh, oh, I need to go out. I would worry that this is possibly an incurable issue for Jacko because... Oh, if he's, he's gone out, right? he's taking a scary okay. But if he's gone out with a, a brake pressure that high, that would suggest he's not put a setup on, because the game naturally puts your brake pressure at 63, I think. Yep, yeah, 61, 63. It does depend on the track though, because I think stuff like uh, balance could be completely different. Well, Jacko is going to come across the line anyway. It's going to be a 1 minute 23.8. Expect that to be absolutely obliterated. Possibly by Baza, the second man out on lap, and Jacko retires from the session before even getting back to the pits. And Pete has down. also retired, as has Yuri. They I, make contact. Well, I'm trying to figure that out because it's a bit of a not. MK Born, I'm trying to see if I can find a car he's going for the incident, but there's actually a lot Ooh, going wrong uh, here. People, people retire. I wonder if the assists are set wrong. I wonder if ABS was turned off. Just learn to drive better, do you know what I mean? But I think that might be <laughs> the end of uh, the first session. I, I, I would tend to agree with that. But, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, Risky uh, has confirmed ABS is turned off and set, and that's why Jacko was locking up. I think that's his sign to retire, to be honest. He didn't make a single apex on that lap. Right then. That's going to be... A delay, and we were just saying before we started how well prepared we were. We were going to be able to start on time. We weren't going to worry about this 10 past 7 nonsense. We're going to be doing this 10 past 7 nonsense. So, Aww. oh well. Uh, go back to the main menu. Yeah, before you get, before you, the stream kicks you out. Yeah. I don't even really have much to show you, to be honest. I've not really got anything to keep you entertained. I can show you some liveries if you fancy it, but I don't really see a point in stopping the stream. I would imagine it will end pretty... This will get restarted pretty quickly. I have got the stand, the playoff and the chase standings yeah. for you, Mr. Wyatt, for me to go through while she finds something to show on stream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm showing a fake Mercedes livery, better than what they can do. That's about all I can show you, really. I'm just it's a bit boring. Is that the only There's... livery you've got? I've got others, but m most of them are cockabies. Like, that's just a bad. That's just a worse McLaren, to be honest. I just fancied making one, and then I don't even know what that's meant to be. I don't know why I made that and not changed it. <laughs> We've got my fake Lotus that I was going to use for Throwback Week in Season Eight, but Jacko says no, 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 no. Everyone does this. We're not allowed to keep it on. And then I tried to make a Ferrari, but there's absolutely no. There's no good templates for a Ferrari, so that's about all you can do mm. for it. And then that's my livery. If you ever see me racing at any point this season or next season, it'll be in that livery. So, yeah, it's a nice if livery. If you're ever in the mood, that is. Well, if I'm ever in the mood, if Jack was ever really needing me to drive for some reason. The thing is, I've already got my win. I've, I've, you know, I've won a race yeah, in the Cup Singapore. Series. I've got my win. I don't really need to worry about it anymore. Because that would have been annoying. I've been here 10 seasons. You'd think I'd get at least one win on the board and I've managed it. So, But it was only a 25% race. Maybe I should go for a 50%. Try and, get a fit, try and go, go for a 50% one. That'll be good for the stats. We don't want you to just have a one uh, win to your stat. The thing is, I would have had more, but then I'm an ART driver, so I had to start giving wins away. Corey can, no. thank, Corey can thank me for Japan last season. Obviously, Jake probably still hasn't forgiven me for it. He still thinks I was blocking him on purpose. But uh hey, listen, I got Corey a victory, so yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, it's just a small livery showcase. The, the deliveries are shocking on this game really, aren't they? Actually, you can't really do yes. anything with them. It's not F1 twenty twenty and twenty twenty one had some really good ones. The car is yeah, also frankly just twenty twenty one was good. Yeah, they, they, they design they designed them better, like the boxier cars, you could do more nice things with them. These stupidly streamlined boats just don't work very well. None of the sponsors can go in the right place. It all overlaps. It's just someone's not thought about the design of these things at all. It does annoy me a lot. But uh, 
Hmm, we've got Saudi Arabia now choosing another track. That'll be that'll be a bit of a shock to the system if they did that. I hope not, because I pre we prepped for Monza and not Jeddah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do I suppose the drivers didn't prep for anything, so I'll do whatever. Yeah, but we only get noticed like a few minutes before, but Jack yeah. Jacko was on it this week. He gave us notice like 20 minutes before or something. The thing that confuses me here is that Jacko is the one who made the lobby, so I'd love to know how he managed to get his assist from because he's like... It's been the same every yeah, week. He's it's always the same every week. I swear he like loads the the same settings every week. Yeah, it's an odd one that. But uh, well, we'll get a chance to try again. We've already got 18 drivers back in the lobby, so I assume we're going to get this going pretty quickly, and uh, we'll be able to get back to normal service. We should indeed soon. And obviously, Michelle and OKK are not racing tonight. That's one thing I forgot to say. They're both in America um, on holiday this week. So I kind of wish I was there, to be honest. Um, and replacing them it is, of course, Jacko and Badza. So that's why they're racing tonight. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we're still waiting for two drivers. I don't know who. And Khalifa has already advanced to the round of six. He's already got enough points to surpass the like to Corey, Arnal, Casper and all the other people in the playoffs to advance anyway. So he, he doesn't even need, need to win tonight. He's already, already advanced. But surely he wants to gain enough points to even get to the Championship 5 early. But yeah, Khalifa is your points lead and currently leading. In the drop-off zone currently in the playoffs, it's Gareth on minus 12 and Ben Shaw on minus 16. But the elimination race is not until three weeks' time because there's a certain league owner that's going on holiday or something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. I tell you what, Corey's made a good point. He's a big Liverpool fan. He's been, I don't know why he's so intent on watching the match. He's a 3-0 down already. It's like, it's like me wanting to watch Spoiler Arsenal play. Yeah, it's like, well, from last week. It's two legs. He knows. I don't know what he's so excited about. I'm more excited about the darts that I'm missing. That's what's annoying me. So, Jacko, you've got blood on your hands with this one. I don't oh. know what I, I don't know what I'm 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 missing tonight. I'm I I I mean, I've got stuff planned on after this, so but yeah. we'll have to wait. Uh, who are we missing there? We're missing one more. Uh, it's always one, isn't there? That just doesn't. We get... always we always have to wait. I'm not going to be able to figure it out. Is you uh, yeah, Yuri's in. Oh, we got 20 now. Okay, well, whoever it was is here. It, it was Arnold. It was Arnold. Arnold! Blame his kid. We'll blame the kid. Yeah, don't blame him. We never don't blame, blame Arnold. Right then, we'll be getting ready to ready up then. I assume Jacko will uh, almost certainly. He's Well, he's not even asked. Well, he has said it. There we go. Right, ready up has been called. So, 15 and minutes late, we get started. And or the not. Are right. He's changed something else though, just just there now. So is he is he happy with everything? I can I can all I can all I can always quickly check to see if the assists are right. Yeah. They are similar to Kia, so they look, and I host Kia. They look correct, not your gearbox is on automatic. People use automatic gears. That's incredible. I'm, start, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to use I'm starting to use manual now. Honestly, you'll find like a second a lap once you get the exactly. hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they have been told to ready up. So hopefully they'll ready up soon and we can get going, of course. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any big milestones for starts tonight. N not many, but this will Kier is not long before Kieran reaches 100 starts in the Cup Series. He's on 97. This will be his 98th start. Yes, yeah, same for Arnold. Both of them chasing one. So they'll, they'll hit 100 just before the Championship 5. So that'll... At least get unless, unless they tactically miss some races, maybe try and get it on the dot. But um, yes, we'll see how everyone sort of hangs on. It's uh, the one thing that struck me on the stats. I forget how little Khalif has raced. He's listen. He's raced sixty four times and has sixteen wins, and he only has one championship. Mm. But he's looking very Could much in target more. this season, isn't he? Although saying that, as is uh, Corey. Although Khalifa's the one advanced, he only has two wins this season compared to Corey's four. So on the night, Corey is your best bet to get a win. Maybe not the consistency over the whole season, but you don't necessarily need it as long as you build up the points early enough, which is what he's done. 
So, I suppose they're your two favourites of the championship. I think Arnold and Casper are also quick, but I just think on the night you'd be looking Khalifa or Corey for a championship. Yes, Khalifa and Corey are seem to be the fastest on pace in general in the race as well. Corey can climb up there even when he's at the back and get good results if he doesn't get screwed up anywhere. And Khalifa's just been the most consistent, even though he hasn't had the most wins. He's had quite a lot of podiums this season. He's always been in like the top three pretty much for most of it. And out of all the Cup Series uh, drivers are full-time, he's had the least DNS. He's only had four. So that, 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 that's impressive going for Khalifa. His one DNF this season was Austria, which I felt quite gutted about. And I think that was when you were in the box. I know. I was, we, were, we were in a little praise him, I think, for how well he was managing his race. And then he ended up binning it all by himself out of three, which is a very bizarre mistake for him. Or anyone, really, to make, I suppose. But, um, yeah, that was, just, that was just one we blipped this season so far. But I suppose get it out of the way early. And yes. you don't have to suffer with it later on. Um, just want to quickly as well make a point about the, the Tesco value chase as well. Just with Yori being on his joker, he's currently nine points off the cutoff. It's Ben Harrod who's currently leading the chase. He's on 526 points. That's three points ahead of Risky and, like I say, nine in front of Yori. If Yori can take advantage of this joker, which um, I'd say, I don't know, with such a late second pit stop for everyone else... Surely he must feel like he's got a decent advantage because everyone's going to be in a slightly compromised position, really, with this, except him. And obviously I, Jake. I, yeah, I think Yuri and Jake are... Is, it, is there a race to lose? Because like yeah. you were saying, late, 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 take, late stage, they can't pin until the end of lap 23. We only have about 27 laps of this race. Of course, the drivers, when they pit the stage, didn't know what the track was going to be. As Jacko is the first oh, he's driver off already. out on circuit. Yeah, he, he's off already. Risky's not out on circuit. And with obviously Risky and Ben Harrett, they did so well last week. Lewis, uh, Solomon Lewis got his best result last week at P2, um, where, where, he, where, he, where he did so well. He was comfortably um, the most consistent. It did help that he was near the, near the back in, in quality last week and he got pole because it was dry. In towards the start of qualifying, and it got rain towards the end. So the faster drivers were were obviously slower because they they had the 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 the, 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 wet, the weather to worry about. But looking at the weather for tonight, I did have a screenshot in the chat. It, it, there's no rain tonight, dry all the way through. Now that's boring. I think that's quite good news, though. I think for this sort of strategy we have tonight, you don't want to muck about in the wet with this. I want to see you know if people end up stuck on the hards or st you know. You're going to have to be on the softs as well. Everyone's going to be sat on the soft compound tyres in the last five laps of this race. Fresh softs as well. I think this is one you needed to have dry. So, uh, yeah, I think that is good news. As hopefully this time, we'll get a nice clean lap for Jacko, who's uh, not taking the slipstream there off of the car in front of him. I think that... Well, who's that, actually? That was Jordan, who could have taken that slipstream. I don't think... Uh, he had his brain fully engaged as he came through the first chicane. And then through the Curva Grande, you're going to hug that inside line. Don't touch the grass, he's invalidated. He's invalid. And uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty amateur mistake, really, that, isn't it, for him? He'll yeah. he'll keep How going. He there? Well, I suppose if he touched the grass, I don't, I don't actually know if he fully went off, but it might be a sort of uh, Saudi Arabia situation. You know when if you're going to the line where Sargent went off last year touches the white line gives uh. you the thing or maybe Cody's made a mistake we'll use real life logic but I, 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 in fairness I don't think he went completely off but um, oh he's well he's got a scary wrong this time so he would have invalidated anyway but uh, again Jacko not looking particularly comfortable here and uh, I do want to move over to Baza but we'll, we'll just watch the league owner complete his lap first because I think it'd be a bit rude to cut off of him. I don't want to get myself sacked tonight. He will be you don't about. Want to be sacked uh, for next season, do oh you? well, that's, and next season he's about three seconds quicker than his first try, but obviously the first one was valid. That one was not. Here's Baza, Jess, in the middle sector. Yes, obviously we would expect Baza to be a lot quicker than Jacko on his lap, of course. He has won on the Joker here before in the league on Tuesday night, so he has gone well around here before. This will be his 37th start in the 
Cup Series. He's raced quite a few times this season and has also been in the commentary box as well. But yeah, I have to agree. I do love that brawn, that, that brawn livery that he always has. Usually one of the best liveries on the grid as he heads towards Parabolica now. It is comfortably going to um, be P1 on the board because no one has set a valid time yet. But what's it going to be for Mr. Barry Baldwin? 21.1. But I will expect times to be a lot quicker. Yes, that was slower than Jacko's uh, run there, so there's definitely time to be found. You can sort of tell he's come from the Kia series there, I suppose, can't you? But yes. uh, here comes Jordan, a second quicker than Baza already through the middle sector. Bit of a hesitation in the middle of Ascari, but he gets himself out of the corner uh, unscathed. The man, he's only ever been on pole once. Don't ask you where it is, I don't know, but he has been on pole once. And, uh, well, he needs something to sort of ignite his season. He's... Um, once again, just sort of there, unfortunately. I think I feel like we're always waiting for him to do something amazing, but it never quite happens. A 19.7, that is a decent time. Hopefully we will uh, see him maybe stay up at the front of the grid, uh, or at least closer to the front this week. Yeah, because in in the in the, in, in the other leagues that um, he races in, he's done he's been doing a lot better compared to his previous form. I think over the over the first half of the game cycle, he was just not motivated to play the game at all but now i think he's found this form but hopefully that form will translate into the Kiri series mike kelterborn is up next another mcluster season for mike really in, in in the cup series had some good results for quite a bit of the season and for this half of the season not gone so well he's had two poles can he make it a third tonight it's not going to be jordan it's a 120.5 so the answer to that is no that does make uh, Jordan's time look competitive. I think that is a competitive time from him. I expect that to possibly be in the top 10, if not higher. As we yeah. see um, Pete coming through. Pete, who's losing streak. Well, it's never really seemed to stop. I, I want to say his last win in the Cup Series was here back in Season 1. I think it was a free race winning streak. It was Hungary, it was Spa, and it was here. But he's gone and invalidated, so he will be... Uh, right at the back as it stands as long as the four behind him set a valid times um, that means Jacko won't quite be at the back with his invalid time but let's see how quick Pete would have went anyway as he comes up to the line it's uh, yeah would have beaten Jordan's time so it would have been a 19.5 but he got it wrong out of Ascari I think Ascari is always the common place where you tend to invalidate your lap time I think so I think expect to see quite a few more invalidations I think probably a bit more than Canada, I would say, because it was in, in the wet towards the end. Waze Cuba is up next. A driver that, again, who's had good qualifying, but usually bad luck. But he, he's been doing a lot better in some races this season than he has in previous um, cup iterations. 28 starts to his name. Has not had a win or a pole position. And I wonder if he's going to translate that tonight. He also likes this track but he does tend to get involved in quite a few incidents on track and off the track but let's hope he's not like that tonight up to the line he goes Ooh, p2 but decent luck though from uh, the kia series champion from last season i'm getting some serious bmw williams vibes from the livery there i wonder if that'll be an omen for later on in the race as he completely ignores the first chicane i wonder if he's going to try and give someone a toe later on but uh, Risky, he's at the right time this uh, this time around, and he is going to get a slipstream. Oh, nearly hits the back there, Pete. I'm sure he had that fully under control, but it looked very close indeed. As round the final corner he comes, keeps it all within track limits. Risky, we know he's got a good lap time in him, and this should go to the top, and it does by less than a tenth of a second. But it doesn't matter how much it's by. He's P1 for now. And Jamie Griffiths up next, obviously. He'll always be famous for the win here in Season 4. And uh, i tell you what, again, he's another driver that needs something to ignite his season. And it's not like in the chase where if you win, you're automatically through to the next stage. If you're in the chase, the only advantage you get is the win will put you even closer to try and get that chase championship, which Jamie is trying to do. He was leading last week. But um, he did get, he, he did have a Melusta race last week, whereas the likes of Sully, Ben, Yuri, and Pete had a better, a better race than him. But this is a, this is one of his favourite tracks. Is Jamie Griffiths? He's not on his Joker though, so it's going to be quite a miracle if he does well tonight. One nineteen eight for Jamie, still a decent lap. That though the times from the Cup Series drivers full time are just so close and. 
I believe next up is it one of the yeah, jury. It is one of Hasselaga, our joker, one of our jokers tonight. Yes, and uh, it's not as quick as Jamie Griffiths through the middle sector, so I'm expecting this to sort of slot into P5. Although this toe, he's getting down the back straight, will help him. Risky doing a much better job than Pete was doing, it must be said, for slipstream there, because he held his own speed down that straight. That's always more useful for a slipstream than rabbit, just parking it in one side. It's not going to help him up the position, so he does, like I say, slip into that P5. But he's on a Joker. I think the Joker here, is, as we've been saying, could be an enormous advantage here, so keep your eye on him in this race. Now, where's Ben Harrod? He is the Tesco value chase leader by three points. And, uh, well, risky. He's currently P1 at the moment in this qualifying session. He's only, let's say, the three points behind. So, Ben, you've got to be aiming for that P1 here. He's got to. He's got to at this point. He had his first Championship 5 last season after amazing win at the Super Speedway. Um, which is, is making an appearance twice in the Cup Series calendar next season. So we get, don't get it not just once, but twice, which is always a good thing because last season was so good. But, but he's, he is a midfield man, um, but he did not qualify to the playoffs. So he's in the chase. He kind of purposely wanted to get through into the chase. So that's where he is. Up to the line he goes. Mm. P3. So not quite enough to beat Risky. So Risky, the, the man to beat right now. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I thought, actually, that middle sector was looking quicker, but I guess he lost a little bit of time in the last sector. Either way, P3 is not the end of the world for now, as we see Quinn coming through. And, uh, well, he's got a funky-looking livery. I wonder where the inspiration for these colours came from. He's absolutely got it rolled into a sky there. He broke way too late. It's almost like he was riding the throttle and the brake at the same time. It just looked all raw on that. But as he comes through... He's going to have to finish the lap anyway, but I think he'll he'll know it himself that there's time that he's lost. And uh, coming up to the line, let's see how much time that is going to be. It could well be about sort of seventh, eighth place. And indeed, there he goes, eighth place. The second slowest time so far. Now, Leroy, one of the poor drivers who, uh, like Quinn, has nothing to really fight for. There, it sadly is... One of only two drivers here just making up the numbers. And it is a shame because Leroy is fast. We know he's got the potential to do well in the Cup Series. But um, you can't do anything when you're ninth and out of the playoffs. But he could play a part in helping his brother out, I suppose. That, that could be his, uh, his goal now. I, th I think that could potentially be his goal as well. If you're out in the, out in the playoffs, help the, 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 the fellow speed boys to try and get through, especially your brother. So, Leroy, it, this is not a good lap at all. Where did he bin that? Don't know. He must have been off somewhere, maybe a Lesmo or something, but... Yeah. Either way, it's a, a disappointing lap there. Speaking of disappointment, Ben Shaw, what a season he's not having, really. He's uh, Has he got rid of the gold in that car? Has he t oh, no, he's got a little bit still on there. A but uh, It's less than before. It's a purple little sector though, Jess. Maybe this could be where his season starts to turn around. Oh, I've jinxed it so much. Commentator's curse for Mr. Owen Wyatt. And the only reason why he's this low down as well in the playoffs is there was one race where he was in the commentary box around Zanvor, of all places. So he decided to just be in the box because it is, it's, to be fair, he was using a different setup and he didn't want to race the track when Jacko told him what the track was. As Ben goes up to the line comfortably. Fast. It's not by much though to Sully, so that, that that is pretty good. But don't forget, a win will secure the space in the round of six. There's three or four tenths there he left on the line in Ascari. I think the rest yeah. of the drivers will know about that mistake, I'm sure. And they'll be eyeing up that P1 still as Jake, the second of the two Joker drivers. He's got to be eyeing this up as a win. He currently sits sixth. In the championship, a win tonight sends him obviously straight through and uh, gets him closer to that top four, which is where he needs to be aiming for if he wants to get into the championship five and go for a third title. Crossing the line, this should be fastest, and it is by just a tenth of a second. I still think there's more time in this. I think there was as well. I did see that he committed the sky very well. It was a good middle sector, but it must have been in the first or the final sector where he lost it oh. as well. Gareth's gone off. He's not in Valadir, but he's lost time. He has lost a bit of time for his guy. Just as I say that Jake did one, Scarry. Gareth did not, Mr. Wyatt. Oh, he's nearly 
gone to the back of the car in front again. I'm sure that was all under control. But <laughs> as he comes on the final corner, this isn't going to be as fast as Scarf would have wanted. Only P9. He is a driver at risk. And he's got to find some big performances in the next two weeks if he wants to uh, stay in the championship. Now, here's Arnold. Oh, big slide on the, the second Lesmo. He's a driver we're expecting to be at the front, Jess. This, this is the, these are the fast five drivers, the top five in regular points. And we were expecting Arnold to be up the top, but he's just, the car is just... It's so switchy in the, in the back end. He lost a bit of time for Iscari as well. So maybe his setup was more designed for the straights. And don't forget, it's a low downforce track. And many drivers have not had time to prep their setup because it is a mystery calendar. So for most drivers, it's not perfect. So I wonder if it's going to be the same for Arnold. But it's going to comfortably beat some drivers. A 1.19.1. Never mind. <laughs> it's a good lap, but it could have been better. Here's Kieran, who's taken two attempts to get through Ascari, oh. and the second attempt wasn't even good enough. He's got the fully gold-plated car, so Mr. Original here, but um, it's not really helping him out much, and uh, if anything, it just looks a bit garish, actually, on track. It doesn't look very gold at all, really, in the wrong light, but as he comes out of the final corner, this is not going to be fast, is it? Not with that slide, but it should still be somewhere in the top ten. It is P9. He's going to be disappointed with that. He is currently... Again, needing a big performance to get up the grid. That's sort of the last thing he needed to do there, um, Kieran. As, uh, where's Corey? He's the next man up, isn't he? He's uh, quite early on in his lap. Yeah, I think he was keen to get going quite quickly. And I thought he would use the technique to warm up his tyres. But no, he just wants to get going straight away, knowing that he hasn't got long left. And he wants uh, less pressure on his, sh on his shoulders. Uh, he, he definitely needs a better qualifying. He's going to get a toe from probably one of his ERT Got to be Khalifa. That was good. I think they, they both want to be in the Championship 5 together, but when it is a Championship 5, it's all... Oh, he's in the wall. On track and he's binned it, and he's, that, that's not going to be a good qualifying for him. We'll, we'll, we'll stay on board with him for the rest of his lap, but that, that could have been pole without that. Slide, uh, I'm not sure, actually. It, it was it was looking a bit of a poor lap already. This this, I don't think that I don't think he would have been happy before he went off. Obviously, he'd be more unhappy now he's been off. But I don't yeah. think it was looking to be a good lap, regardless. To be honest with you, as uh, we see Casper coming around next. Casper is up next, and unfortunately, he had a double right puncture last week in Canada on lap one, so that forced him to retire from the session. But he's got enough playoff points um, at the moment to be in the top four as it stands. But he, he definitely wants to make sure he can outscore Kieran tonight because that is his nearest rival by 10 points. So then, here he comes through the Alboreto curve. It doesn't sound right, really, does it? It's the Parabolica. And he Ooh, comes up towards the line. And it's not, again, quick enough to be Arnold. So, it's all down to Khalifa. Mr. Paul position, in all fairness. We sort of expect a quick time out of him. He's only been on Paul the 26 times out of 64 starts. So let's see if he can make it 27 out of 65. It looks good. The car seems relatively stable. Again, I, I, I just, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get it on pole, to be honest with you. It's what he does, but that middle sector's not exactly massive, I don't think. And again, wow. the rear's very unstable through uh, the Ascari chicane. I think we're about to see Khalifa not on pole here. And R and I will be watching this with some serious interest as... Uh, the season three champion, the favourite, you could argue, for this season's championship, comes around the final corner. Maybe I'm all wrong. Maybe he has a good last sector in it. Here's Khalifa. It's only P8. Oh. It wasn't a good lap. So, Arnold is going to be on pole position for the 19th time in the Jato Kart Cup series on his 98th start. And Khalifa, that must be one of his worst qualifiers of the season in, you know, dry conditions, all dry conditions. That's, um... Bit of a shocker, that really, for him. No, but that's gonna sh that's gonna shake this right up, I believe. That's um, gonna stink for Khalifa. What I'm looking as well, Jake, second place on his Joker. That's a massive for him. And uh, Yuri, twelfth, a little bit further down, right in the mid pack. He'll be feeling a bit nervous going into this race start. 
but uh, that is qualifying for the Chetico Cup Series here in Monza. We're just sort of waiting for Casper to get back to the pits, but I think he must have run out of petrol. Yeah, he's run, he's run out of fuel, so he's going to probably take his time and go into the pits and hopefully retire straight away. So, yes, Arnold does get a playoff point for Paul, which will put him on, if I look at the standings right now, to, uh, 2,054 points, which still puts him in third spot. But again, that's more, one more point than the other rivals below him that he's looking to beat tonight to make sure he secure his spot on points into the round of six. We're currently in the round of eight now. But I'll let you go through the result, Mr. Wyatt. Yes, here's Arnold on pole position then. Jake in second place. Arguably, he'll be the happiest in that qualifying session. Ben Shaw, though, up in third place. He needs a victory this season. Casper in fourth. Risky fifth. Another good qualifying for him. I said his time was good. Jordan sixth again. Happy with those two, I think. Ben Harrett in seventh place. Khalifa eighth. Waste ninth. And Jamie Griffiths in tenth. Kieran eleventh. Yuri twelfth on his joker. Gareth, MK Bourne, Quinn, Bazza, Corey, Leroy, Jacko and Pete your grid for this race some shockers out there tonight as well people that you were expecting to do well near the top 10 just struggle with their setup struggle struggle with the rear end most likely in sector two that's where they lost all that time but at least they uh will probably be fast on a straight line but in the corners just w w watch out for them of course but that that, that is going to be interesting as well remind of the stages because we did say at the beginning of the stream before the the lobby restart kicked in Stages tonight are lap 12 and lap 22. It's a mandatory two-stop, and they can't pit before the end of lap three. So, again, this is good for Yuri. This is good for Jake. And we will obviously keep an eye on the mandatory stops. And there's also a point for uh, most laps led and also and any laps led, 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 led as leader. They also get a playoff point. Yes, so... Plenty for us to keep our eye on. This is where we might end up missing Jack. Even didn't actually you know. Saying that, last time I was on with Jack, we both lost count of all the pit stops. I have a feeling today might be a bit more formulaic because everyone's going to have to extend stints and just just have an awkward race. I mean, the amount of instability we saw on the cars and qualifying. The last thing they're going to want to do is do long stints on the you know mediums and hards. So I imagine it'll be two mediums and a soft for most of them. Maybe yeah. a soft, medium, soft. Um, and then the Joker's maybe, you know, a medium soft. I think you can do a one-stop here if you wait long enough. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. The starting tyres. Um, no one on the hards. Let's say I don't really expect to see them actually all that much. As Gareth has, does as usual, sprint off into the distance. And risky. And risky. But it's a nearly 50-50 split. We've got... Uh, well, we've got nine on the softs and we've got 11 on the mediums. Uh, Arnold, right, the pole sitter is on mediums and uh, Jacob behind he well surely will get him but everyone behind him all, all the way down to eight also on the sausage so Arnold he he might well be looking at his mirrors a wee bit throughout the, the early stages and of course he'll run longer than everyone and um, inter I don't know I suppose I, I suppose it's I'd be starting on the sauce I think I would. Yeah, you just want to get that first stop out of the way, and then the second stop will come when it comes, but... I mean, it'll come pretty damn late, is when it'll come. So suppose maybe two mediums, less worrying about your tyre wear, but... We'll see what happens. But don't forget the later stages, and Arnold obviously wanting to stretch his first lot of mediums quite early on, and maybe do two soft stints, so he could be on the freshest and softest tyres towards the end of the race as well. Whereas the ones on the softs, they're going to hope there's no safety cars at the, at the start because they don't really want to pit quite early on. So the way they're going to stretch their their first stop quite a long time. I would expect quite a few people to go on to the hards. I don't think mediums will get to lap 23 after lap end of lap 3. Well, it depends on the way to pit, I suppose. You know, they could wait 5 or 6 laps, then it might be viable. Hmm. Because I think, in general, for a 50% race, a one-stop here is quite doable. But uh, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. It's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think it's one of those ra it's one of those weird races where the the stages really come into play and help them. I'm hoping that's something that really sticks around for next season. Just slightly more randomised uh, playoff point or play or what am I calling it? 
Sage points, that's what I'm calling it. Garth has been disqualified from the session. There's a surprise. Risky, don't really know what he's up to, to be honest. He's waiting forever because he's... I've probably realised that, actually, if he wants to keep any heat in his tires, he's, he's ought to <laughs> let the leaders go in front of him so he doesn't mess up his start because he's got a very good starting position. Oh, now he's been disqualified. He hit yeah. someone. So he's going to be on cold tyres. And cold tyres around Monza, it's never good. And I've he's, tried that once and it's not good. He's also miles off his uh, starting point as a result of that. Everyone at the front, the top four anyway, have got themselves into position correctly. And Pete, our last man on the grid, as Kieran gets his parking run as well. But we're waiting some lights now. And round 13 of the Cup Series will start any moment now. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing and straight away, Jake's going to take the lead. Those mediums just not working for Arna, but how many are going to pass him? Because here comes Casper having a look on his outside as well. Oh, big incident in the middle of the pack. Gars out of the race. He's one of the drivers at risk. That's massive for the championship. And I believe MK Bourne was involved as well. There's a few penalties being dished out. MK Bourne, do he does indeed have no front wing. Quinn, front wing damage. Jacko just stuck at the back for all that, and Kieran is falling through as well. There's, a, let's say, three or four penalties involved in this. Safety car's out, so we'll have a chance to look, but there's three separate five-second penalties out there. And uh, for these guys with damage, that's going to be at least a chance to come in, get a new front wing, and then, you know, possibly make your third, your first stop when everyone else is uh, sort of into racing conditions. So I don't think, pretty much unless you're Gareth, that's not the end of the world, that safety car. As Leroy, um, I noticed he was lagging a lot on his qualifying lap, but he's now fallen right to the back of the grid. I'm wondering if he's having issues uh, still. And, uh, oh, Quinn's actually got a front left puncture. I didn't notice that. Is there a puncture for, for, for Leroy as well? No, he's I just he's I, just going uh, off the track. Yeah, but he, he just got he's, off the uh, Look track at him, he's, he's, he's lagging, there. look. He's lagging still. So I think that might not be a race that's going to last very long for him. But uh, for Quinn, this is going to be painful because he's got to hurry up and get back. He's lucky it's not a rear puncture, this, otherwise he might well have been at risk of getting lapped. But uh, here, I think on the front left, you should just about get away of not being lapped. Now, I'm expecting only people with damage to pit, so we will... Or possibly risky with his five setting penalty, but he is going to stay out. Don't know what he got it for, but he's got one, and that's the important thing. I can tell you. Um, it was... Oh, um, um, a collision with Ben Harrett. Ben Harrett. To race director. Um, and um, there was quite a concertina effect between MK Bourne and it was actually, according to the race director, Pete, that made contact with Gareth or the other way around. There were a few people just struggled to get off the line in the back there as well. So probably, probably just throttle management potentially was a bit difficult with the traction zones. But oh. Leroy and Baza and Quinn do come in and yeah, Leroy Leroy's has retired. Like, yeah. Uh, yes, it, as as we ex as we expected there, so um, I'm going to make an educated guess here and say that MK Bourne, considering he's got the most damage out there, might be the one that um, Gareth connected with on that start. Obviously, he went yeah. spearing off into the right hand side wall. He was miles off his grid slot as well, and on cold tires. So maybe not entirely surprised that cars were swarming at him. But uh, let's say that's a driver at risk. He's sat in 7th in the championship at the moment. He will be pretty much a must-win next week if he uh, wants to progress into the round of 6. And it looks like he's going to drop out. I think he always drops out at this stage, doesn't he, in the season? So, um... Oh, it well. seems to be a thing for Mr. Gav, isn't it? But that means it's more than likely that he's going to be in the commentary box again for the championship 5. Now, if you're MK Bourne, obviously, he's not got a penalty to deal with, so I'm going to guess that's why he's not just coming to change the front wing now, although he will lose time doing that regardless, won't he? But he's, he's just sticking it out and hoping that on this restart lap, because uh, it will restart at the end of lap three, he'll be able to just follow the safety car to the pits. It won't count as a he safety car he stop. He, yeah, he can't do that. It he can't well, do that. Well, he can do no. it, but it won't count as a safety car stop, I mean. He's coming in. Oh, he's coming in now. You might as well have just left it a lap and just taken a mandatory stop out of it, no? Or can you not follow the safety car in at all no, under any you, circumstances? You, you, can't, you can't follow the safety car in at all. Yeah. You, you have to. Uh, you can, but that will be a non mandatory stop. Fair enough. So. Well. 
So Leroy's coming back, actually. He fancies uh, watching, I suppose, because he's already retired from the race. Maybe he'll do some... Uh... Jeffing for Yuri. Yeah, just a wee bit. Uh, Yuri, who we haven't really mentioned, he's stayed in 11... Well, he started 12th, he's up to 11th. Uh, again, on his Joker, he's just... He's got a full front wing. That's That's a good result for him. Not as good as it is for Jake, though. He is going to lead the field off on this restart. Casper, like I say, he did get ahead of Arnold. I suspected he would. And uh, Khalif has actually lost a position on that start. He's fallen down to ninth. So uh, it was already a compromised situation, but it's not even worse. Corey, just three, uh, well, just two cars between those two. So we'll keep an eye on that for the restart because they are the two drivers I had expect to be the most sort of on the move. But uh, we're waiting for these lights to go out. I believe they haven't yet, have they? They still haven't gone out. Taking I their time. I would expect to. I would expect to, because it's usually about two or three laps that the safety car yeah. coming. It'll I happen at the last if... corner, I'm guessing. Although oh, there's a couple of... There's three right? cars, though. There's three cars haven't caught the pack, so perhaps the game's going to just wait. If it does, expect to see a lot of pit stops here. Or, well, oh, but will we, though? Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. Casper won't, Casper won't pit because I know you'll say the safety car stop. Jake, of course, won't pit because he's going to stay into about, I would say, lap 11 and then go on to mediums, potentially, or hards. But I think mediums can get to the end. So top three stay out. We have someone that's come into the pit lane. No and, one. Oh, they dummy, they dummy. No one's, no one's coming in. I tell you what, MK Boring will be kicking himself. I'd say he could have just left it a lap. And he could have changed that front wing, you know, for, I suppose he hasn't lost anything, no, has he? But it could have nah. been a man that just stop. He had, he was going to have to pit anyway. But I suppose it gives him the chance to use a safety car stop later on. And Quinn is going to make a mandatory stop. Uh, which will put him even further back in the pack. He'll have to do a pretty quick out lap. But uh, I think he's, he's sort of, he, he's got nothing to lose now having had that puncture at the start. you got to sort of throw the, throw the dice, roll the dice, I should say, but... He's gone onto softs. That's not going to make it to the second uh, stage. So actually, he's, he's still going to have to make two stops in this race. Hopefully, people remember that the stage was that long. Yeah. And, uh, and they really the, <laughs> the person who set this stage. So you probably will be the man who would expect to go on to serve hards. Oh no, he was on hards when he pitted. Yeah. Ah. Could have stuck some mediums on, couldn't he, and just hoped for the best. But, well, it's half the lap he's got to catch up now to these guys who are presumably this time going to see the safety car lights turn off. I would be very surprised if this stays out for yet another lap. It doesn't ever tend to do more than four, and indeed, it's not going to. And so Jake can now think about setting up a restart. Again, I wonder how aggressive he'll be, because if, if Casper comes barreling up his inside, he knows he's got to protect himself because of this Joker. It's such a massive advantage when the whole field's going to have to wait so long for that second pit stop. And you can pit whenever you want now, Jig. You can do whatever you want. And, uh, well, let's see. The safety car has disappeared, and uh, Jake is slowing the field down nicely. Just heating those brakes up a wee bit. You can see the usage there. Tiny, tiny bit, but enough to gather some heat. And I'm going to guess he'll probably go as late as he possibly can, just to negate the uh, the slipstream effect. And uh, Quinn isn't... Maybe he will catch up, but no, I think he'll be a couple he of seconds off. Won't. But I tell you what, Jake really is leaving it long. And Casper, he does follow him, but I don't think close enough to be able to make anything happen. Ben Harrett has taken the place of Ben uh, Shaw and into fourth place which will help him out in his chase campaign into turn one. Look at, oh, Risky's hit uh, Ben Harrett again. And that's our car way off. Is that uh, Pete? It was indeed. He's just a crawling over the curbs there. He's going to fall right to the back of the field. And that's a disastrous restart for the former winner of this race. Now, Jake's already got a second gap as he heads through into the start of the second sector. Oh, more stuff happening. Was that uh, Khalifa bursting off? He's out. Khalifa's in the wall, and there's another car off as well. Safety car out again. And that was Khalifa going barreling off the road, straight into the wall. And yeah, is that an issue with that? his rig, or with his... That, that can't be driver error. He wouldn't just barrel into the wall at full speed like that. It looked pretty quick anyway. Was he trying to break? 
Oh, it, uh, it was it was it was hard to it was hard to tell because I, I literally caught all the aftermath of it. I did see someone going off, and I was hoping it wasn't Khalifa, but it wasn't. So I was talking about his lack of DNFs in the qualifying. It's only kind a fifth DNF in his DNA. history, isn't it? Yeah, it's his, it's his fifth DNF, unfortunately. <laughs> but he's already through to the next round of the playoffs anyway. So, but that's going to give him a tough ask to um, be points leader after this. So if Corey and Arnold and Casper finish. They could jump Khalifa in the standings. Confirmation, it is a stuck brake pedal for Khalifa, so he wasn't able to slow down. Oh, now, no. we have got our first pit stops. They are now taking the advantage because they know that the safety car will be out until the end of lap seven at the very least. But look at this. The two Bens are stacking up. And Ben uh, Ben Harrods has to take a new front wing. So he gained a position. And I wonder where he got hit there. Unless Khalifa maybe nicked him on the way off the track. He did burst up to third place didn't he when he went off so he could well have uh, taken one or two drivers as collateral damage but Corey will jump but Ben uh, Har Ben Shaw's lost out here a little bit because Khalifa well not Khalifa sorry uh, I think Pete's the only driver that's going to be uh, behind him now Risky and Corey jumped ahead so I got my words out in the end but these are all mandatory stops so they can't take advantage of a later safety car really in this stage it's so early in proceedings and again if, if you're Pete, you've got to take these tyres until lap 20, the end of lap 22. That end of lap 23. Well, end of lap 23, stage, even, yes. Yeah, the stage is, the end, the stage is lap 22 as well. So I'm a bit confused as why Pete has gone on to soft, really. But if I was Quinn, I would have gone on to the hards that you uh, did a bit of your, your early sin early when you got damaged. I, I would have gone on hards, personally, if I was Quinn. Well, but... nothing, nothing, uh, nothing stops you coming in and again, obviously. Exactly. Yeah, you, you, yeah. What, 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 once you've done your first mandatory, you, you can do a non-mandatory, non but he's already done a safety car stop, so it, it obviously it, it, he has to agree with blank stop later on. Whereas at the top... But top 11 pit now for non man Actually, no, because most of them have already done this one. If Baza pits now, then he could... Oh, I'm just trying to think. Did Baza pit under safety car? I can't remember if he did or not. I think he did, and I forgot to write it down. Don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no, it was that one. Yeah, he got caught up in the lap one incident. I remember now. No one else appears to be pitting. So, um... As we expected, I suppose, a lot of them are just having to stick this out. Which is, I suppose, good for them at the moment because they're getting to save their tyres. They haven't raced any more than, what, well, one and a half sectors in this race. So, and we're already on to lap seven. This is actually fantastic for your tyre wear. So, you can almost ignore the sort of lap, you know, how old their tyres are on the screen. It's very much misrepresenting how little wear they actually have. Mm. This is good for Jake because without the safety car being out, it would usually when it's green flag racing, average rate of tire wear 6.5% per lap if you start on the softs, which is slightly lower compared to like F122. But he's he, he, he's got he's definitely got a really good chance to make the strategy soft to medium work. I think he might have planned soft to hard, but if I was him, do soft to mediums. You can you can pit early. Everyone else will have to pit at the end of lap 22 you can stretch those softs to even lap 12 if you wanted to to make sure the mediums definitely get to the end of the race so i would try and stretch out these softs for a bit longer yet yeah. you see i i kind of disagree with this being an advantage for him because again i i don't think the tower is enormous around here so i think he would mm. have been able to go uh for mediums anyway what this has done it's actually it's helped the rest of them because the rest of them are able to save their tires a little bit more and they can push a hundred percent now the whole way this sort of eliminates a little bit of the tire saving phase from this race. It opens up the ability to do a second soft stint, you know, without having to worry about the tire wear on, you know, at the start. They can go full blast here. And so Jake now, well, you know, he'll still have to manage a little bit, so he'll have to, I would have imagined, be looking in his mirrors a little bit more. Same with Yuri, although at least Yuri's on the mediums. He can go full attack on his softs at the end. But Jake won't be able to do that. So, um, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out for him, but, um, yeah, it remains to be seen what will happen. But around the final corner, is he going to wait as long as he did last time? I'm sure uh, Casper will be thinking about, again, an attack into Turn 1, if he can manage it, as they heat their tyres up as as usual. Although, it must be said, I think uh, 
Jakes are a bit colder than Casper. It's not that it matters. He's got away well off the restart. And Wes is now going to get in front of Jamie Griffiths. I can see uh, Jordan and Yuri also side by side down towards turn one. This is quite important for Yuri's race. Don't get it wrong into here. As contact into turn one, Jamie Griffiths has nearly taken Arnold out of the race. But luckily, Arnold stayed facing in the right direction. It cancels out, though, Jamie's move on Wes. He just got a little bit too deep into the Britain zone. Uh, Yuri did back out of the move on Jordan as well. I guess he saw the contact happening in the front foot. Let's not do anything there. Right on the outside. That's never going to work for Casper. But look at that. Losing the rear end in the middle of the, the chicane goes Jake. And now we're side by side for the lead. All three of these lot got to be safe here. And Jake does the sensible thing. No point getting involved in an accident when you've got one less stop to make. But Jake... Falls to third. Casper falls. Well, he goes up to the lead, I should say. And Arnold on the inside into Lesbo 1. That could easily have been a free car pileup. But they all got away with it. Yellow flags in the middle sector for Baza. As uh, we see Pete. Pete coming through there. With front wing damage on his left-hand side. And no front wing for, Bar uh, for Barry Baza. I'm surprised, actually. That hasn't been another safety car. But luckily, we'll actually get a lap of racing underway. As Corey, alongside Jacko, moves up into the top 10. And a bit more side by side. Here's Yori. He's going to get the move done this time on Jordan. And he stays close to the inside. You can see Ben Harrett closing in at the back. And another yellow for Jacko this time. He's into the wall almost at the final corner. And we've got some pit stops. Casper's in. Casper is in. There's no safety car. So he, he, he had to get the stop uh, early, didn't they? So he's going on to a set of the medium compound of tyres. And we've got Kieran who's in the pits. And so is Jordan. Kieran and Ben, Sh ben Shaw had a horrific start in the safety car race start. I think they both got caught in something which dropped them to the back of the grid. This is not good because Ben is still at risk of being knocked out of the round of eight, which is something I would not expect from being a... A, a Cup Series champion from last season. And uh, with Kieran, he, he he can't afford to have Jake beat him tonight because otherwise he could be at risk when we get to the round of six in a month um, a month and a bit's time. So for, for Kieran, this is not good for him. Luckily, Jacko's pointed in the right direction and he has not got any damage. Barry Borwin has pitted for front wing change and he's gone to mediums. That is, I'm just, I believe that is his first mandatory stop because he did pit um, on lap one earlier. Now, Jamie Griffiths, I'm watching the fight for fourth place. He's just gone off. And MK Bourne has also gone off. And Yuri went with him. I wonder if there was a bit of content in there or if they all had to slow mm. up because uh, Jamie Griffiths just got it a bit raw into a scar and it might have just caused a bit of a Constantiner. Don't see any damage on Yuri's car, but he has lost ground. I definitely see damage on MK Bourne's car. So I'd suggest he's the one who's initiated the contact. Ben Harrop is ahead. Of, oh, of Jamie Griffiths and they nearly came to blows on the main straight there. That was almost an airplane crash, similar to what we saw at the start there with Gareth. But it is Jamie regaining that position. They're falling away from, from the top three. Wes will be liking this. He's got a bit of free space on his own. Sits in third at the moment. And Jake as well. He's stayed in the DRS zone of Arnold. I think he'll be happy enough with this. Uh, again, no one only has to make one stop. Just focus on your driving and you should be okay. Yeah, I think with, with, with Jake, I think he's playing a conservative approach, which is quite quite important as well. But you don't want to lose too much time because otherwise the pit lane loss could be huge. But we still got a few more safety cars potentially in, in their back pocket for Jake to take advantage Look of. Look at this, Jess, and... with P4. This is this is gonna wow, get. This is crazy. This is gonna get. The free bit... midfield people. How are you going to find room for this? They want to try free wide. It's not going to happen. Ben Harrett is up to fourth once again, but it's not the best run for Ascari. Jamie Griffiths has had a better run, as has Risky. And the camera angle is really not helping here. But look at this, side by side. Is there room again to make a free wide? I'm sure Risky will look at it, but if he's got any sense, he'll just hind back, get the DRS off of uh, Jamie Griffiths as right on the outside goes Ben Harrett up the inside goes Risky and I think Risky will have the better run on the main straight as well he will indeed that's worked out well for him ahead of his main rival in the chase remember Ben Harrett and Risky only three points apart at the top of the chase standings yeah I'm just I was just trying to look at who uh, led lap eight and it was I believe it was Arna when Casper came into the pitch yes so I, was I was. V, I was doing a bit of v, a VAR chat there that, uh, but we got Ways and Jamie Griffiths in the pit so that's their first stops done Will they jump Casper? Uh, I think Casper's a long the way yeah. down the road. Yeah, a long way down. But well, he will have to run a bit longer on his medium. So I, I do sort of see a second safety car. Well, I say a third safety car coming up at some point soon. So uh, sort of 
wait for that to happen, I think, and then we'll really see how the strategies play out. Um, with where Yuri's at at the minute, he's obviously found himself in a bit of sort of no man's land after the incident with um, with NK Born. I'm really hoping that there's no damage on his car now because I mean, it was enough to certainly slow him down. Uh, maybe not damage him, but he certainly uh, dropped off the pace a little bit ever since the contact happened. And uh, just looking again at the front two, I can see that uh, Arnide's got his pit light on. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. If I'm him, I'm staying at another lap and trying to get the uh, the playoff point, but uh, he is going to do that. I wonder if Jake fancies nicking it off him, though. He's going to have the DRS on the main straight, and it'll close him nicely up to the back of the race leader, but um, he's just holding back for now. But just keep an eye on a potential attack as Corey sets a new fastest lap as he moves up into fourth place. Passing Ben Harrett. This is looking good for Ben Harrett at the moment because he's ahead of the likes of Yuri. But for Risky, he's a little bit further behind. But I believe it's three points. So it's going to be, I think, a one point gap if it was to stay as it was today, which will be absolutely quite close in Cup Series standards. As Pete goes in again, so does Jacker. They do another stop, but don't forget for most of them, they, they are non mandatory stops. But for some of them, it's their, it's their first stop under green flag running. So they don't want to do a safety car stop. But I don't think Jake's anywhere near R now to get the stage point. I think if I was Jake, wait, probably if, probably pit this lap to, to get onto the memes. Because unless he can um, catch up like a few temps per corner on this straight, I don't think it's going to happen. Just R now just got the better straight line speed and the better grip as well. Yeah, he's doing well on these mediums, obviously, to keep the uh, the gap where it is. I think Jake Soth will be starting to drop off a wee bit now. Again, seven laps behind the safety car. It does sort of skew the numbers a bit. And Jake is happy to keep going. He'll follow the race leader, who has just taken his stage point for that lap 12. Uh, Arnaud's just uh, giving him himself a wee bit more of an advantage in this... Uh, Run and of course with Khalifa out of the race, this is a very good chance to overtake him in the standings, which he uh, will do if he wins the race. Yes, he would actually, because obviously with Khalifa out, he, he, I, I'm just trying to think of the points gap. So he was uh, 20, 21 he was, points behind. He was 19 uh, points behind, wasn't he? Yeah, 2072 Khalifa, 2053 for Arnold. So I think it was 21, roughly. Yeah, so, well, he's got a point now. He, he's also got a point for leading the race, so he's got two he got, points yeah, already. He got a point for Paul. He got a point for Paul. So that, that, yeah, so that gives him. So that's already closed down to 16. And I think, what, you get 20 odd if you win the, you get 20 if you win the race, don't you? So. Yes. He's looking good, and he might well even take most laps led if he can extend this as far as he possibly can. And just just take as many points as he possibly could out of this race because I think when he does pet he'll fall behind a few drivers and uh, Jake is again he's doing well to hold the gap I think he's saving his ERS up have you noticed he's up to 60% now yep. and Arnold's going to pit so that'll extend uh, well it'll let Jake have some free air I should say Corey though look over him he's made his first stop he's catching the race leader he's only two seconds behind him Risky as well, on the same strategy. He has found some serious pace in the last few weeks. And here comes uh, Ben Shaw on Ben Harrett. I keep getting mixed up between these two. It's not helpful when you keep racing each other, lads. But uh, they're also the, the, the genuine top five in this race at the moment. Which is yeah, not an order anyone would have predicted going in, I don't think. No, and I have to say, even though Yuri's 30 seconds down the road, he's got one less stop to make. But he's probably going to wait until at least lap 20 to go on Sauce, because otherwise Sauce will, will not make it to the end from this point. Yeah. And this is where I'm saying that Jake has a disadvantage, because of course he's already only two seconds behind him, and carrying a train of three cars behind, they'll all get to go on Sauce for their last stint. Jake has to go on mediums. So that that's that's where I'm saying on the safety car. I think I think Corey will be looking he'll be looking quite good here. I want to say the record for the most wins in the season is four, and he's on four at the minute. A fifth could well be on the cards, and that'll of course make him the first ever repeat winner here in uh, Monza, which must mean it's bound to go wrong at some point. But into the pits comes Jake. He's performing the undercut. He's also uh, wondering if he's 
going to be able to jump uh, Arnide. Arnide was in some free space, so I'd be very surprised if he does. Arnide uh, catching Yuri. This is four track position. Although, with the age of the tyres, it should be a pretty one and done move here for Arnold. He shouldn't really have to look back after this. He's not using his ERS as well. He's being nice and sensible here. Right. So, that'll be coming through. Nice dose of DRS. Gets a slow down for turn one. Can maybe try and go for a fast as up here. It was a bit of an acute angle, actually, into the second part. But, uh, he'll try and pick that point up as well during this race. So, Jake behind Yuri by uh, 2.9 seconds, so Arnide's actually nearly 4 seconds in front, that's just a one lap undercut, the difference that makes to your race but uh, again, I'll keep saying it one safety car will change everything again actually, because this whole top 4 wouldn't be able to take their mandatory second stop under a safety car if it came late enough for them to do it in that case anyway, but uh, We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Even a safety car at this point will just lose the whole pack up. So they actually need this lot for there not to be a safety car. Yeah, because we already had two, remember? Well, I was expecting a few more at this point due to the nature of Monza, but we, we haven't got any at the moment. Risky, by the way, is looking much quicker. He's looking good, than yeah. On a straight line. He's been looking very good. His form has been good in both Kia and Cup Series recently. Looks like he's going to get the lead here into turn one. No, he can't. Just to remind you, Risky only ever won a single race it was austria in season two i believe it was uh the well austria round 10 last season of the last race of the regular season i should say he's uh, last in the championship going into that race and he won it after a chaotic race but it's been seven seasons since that magical moment when he was on pole last week he was nearly in the wall coming out of general just again so you've got to just keep yourself keep yourself on form because you've got the pace at the minute and this could be win number two in the Cup Series after like, was really a very strong second place last week in a pole position. I said he was looking strong at the start of qualifying. And this could be um, massive for his season. Because where is he at the moment? He's currently, like I say, three points off Ben Harrett in the chase. This will put him a good, decent gap clear. A win in the chase, of course, doesn't guarantee you're into the Championship 5. But it certainly gives you a good chance. Yep, it does, and he, 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 is on, he is on form in the Kia Series as well, I believe. I'm just trying to remember if he won on Tuesday night. Yes, he did. His second win in the row in the Kia Series. So, he's, I think, translating his form from Kia to Cup, and I, I think he's looking to do what Leroy did many seasons ago, get into a Cup Series Championship 5 and a Kia Series Championship 5 in the same season. Wide goes Corey at Turn 1. That'll help Risky to catch up a little bit more. I think he's... I don't know if he's feeling the pressure, Corey, or if he is just struggling for pace. Remember, he didn't have a good qualifying. This is risky on the day has been the quicker driver. So that's why I'm not massively surprised to see that situation the way it is. I'm just noticing, by the way, that uh, Yuri is going to be done possibly by two cars into one corner here. His race doesn't appear to be just going at all to plan, sadly. He just doesn't seem to have the pace to make the Joker work here. And uh, uh, it does look like he's going to keep falling down the order, unfortunately. As Wes yes. on his outside, he'll get that move done. Yeah, Ray's with the fresher tyres and with 16 lap old means, we're just probably going to be on around about 60% right now. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's not good. Oh, it's cool. He's got a penalty. That could be huge. He's leading the race. So that promotes the, not the net race leader to risk it. The net race leader is, is Jake, but the net race leader out of the one who have still got to do well, to stop is risky. Again, I I'll still, for now, call this the race for the lead because I just think, at the end, the tire advantage that that these lot are going to have over Jake will be just too much. I mean, Jake lost three seconds to Arnett on a set of new softs there in one lap. Imagine what this lot are all going to be like at the end, chasing him on his old mediums. He'll have no chance, surely. Mind you, it will only be for four, for three lap or for four laps, I suppose. But still, that's what. Look, there's no safety car. I I think this is Risky's race to win. Because I tell yes, you what, Jake, Jake's not making an, an impression on Casper or Arnold at the minute. Again, I suppose he has to pace himself, but I just don't know if he's got race winning pace today. I don't, I just don't see it as of right now. Anything could happen, of course. As running outside goes, uh, oh, and off the track actually goes Wes, and that was Kieran going way too deep into the corner, and he sort of had nowhere to go. Did uh, the man who was running third place at one point in his race? He has let Kieran back through. But uh, that, that, that very nearly came to blows. 
That did. That could that could have been disaster. Ray's has got into a little bit of the walls in some races this season, but he's Ooh. had a good qualifying. Yellow flag. Jacko, is, is it? Jacko. Jacko again at the final corner. He's brought his front wing. Coming into the pits. In the pits. That's a bit Not of a disaster of status for him, isn't it? That's what you get for abandoning us in the commentary box, though. So, tough. <laughs> right, let's let's watch um, the net race leader ish, kind of, sort of, risky, all over the back of Corey. He'll know about Corey's penalty now. So, if I'm him, I'm saving my ERS. I've got a free second gap to the two Bens who are scrapping at the minute behind. Save a bit of ERS for the end of the race. You know, you. Corey's not going to pull three seconds on you while you've got DRS all the time. So, no. surely save up a little bit. I know Corey's using everything he's got, but it's, it's sort of trapping Risky in that same mode where they both are just burning ERS. Whereas Ben isn't... Well, the, the two Bens aren't doing that. There was a brief yellow flag in one. I'm not entirely sure what that was for. I am watching Jake on the back of Casper. I'm hoping nothing's happened with those two, but there is a lapped car of Jacko. Perhaps that's... Where yeah, the yellow came in. Maybe yeah, he was getting out of their way. As, uh, Jay gets past Casper, no way he makes place. that work. No way that works. He's gone no, off. That, that, he, he hasn't made it stick, <laughs> Owen, as Casper dives it in into Lesbo. One. Oh, he's hits him goes. as well oh, into no. the wall. Jack, who just about avoids him. I don't think that'll have caused front wing damage. It was a very small love tap. That will. Um, no, now he's got front wing damage. And the Joker driver has binned it and that's going to be such a difficult place to get back onto track as well and that is now a five setting penalty as well it was a collision it was his fault with her waist i suppose reversing back onto the track i don't think it hit him that hard but you can't reverse no. back onto your life race track like that and that has sent this race into completely open territory now because risky i'm sure he'll be getting told about this he's run out of vrs so he's he's completely out of vrs Ben Shaw hasn't won a single race this season. He's keeping his ERS in touch here. Risky, he's got to be careful not to lose this race. He's got a massive chance. And Ben Harrett is all over the back of Ben Shaw as well. This is three drivers you would not have expected to be going for a win. And Corey is pulling away from all of them. So it's very hard to tell where this is going to go. And if they get a safety car, these lot will be able to pit. So if they can not just make it... Yet. Yeah, we're getting close to that point, but people are starting to crack. Accidents are starting to happen. Here's Jake. He's got his five set penalty to take. He's going to be right at the back. Oh, no. Oh, he's just gone terribly wrong for it, but Risky's pace has completely fallen away. And I Ben, mean, ben Shaw, Shaw... Ben Shaw's Sorry. taking Ben Harrett with him. This is going to be absolutely fascinating stuff here at the end of this race. Do not turn your stream off yet. Yes, do not, no, do not turn your stream off. But uh, uh, this is going to be interesting for the playoffs as well because Ben is in P3. Oh, Ben shot off. And that's going to be Ben Harrett through. Big slide for the final corner. Lucky not to Leclerc it into the wall. But these two, they're scrapping now. It's not what they need to be doing at this stage of the race. And he's wasting ERS as well, isn't he, Ben Shaw? He's, he's realised there's no point fighting because the man in front of him has DRS. And, uh, well, Jack was not ignoring blue flags. That's not always going to help, really, is it? Who's he blocking, though? I hope it's not anyone in... Well, it's not anyone in the big no point important. positions. Yeah. No. I didn't want to I didn't want to say... I <laughs> didn't want to go like that, but... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's probably he's not important, is it? But... Um, he is. Well, <laughs> I don't know when he said it wasn't important. But he comes through the first sector risky. He is important. He's quite important for this race. He, he hasn't fallen three seconds back. I think that's the crucial thing here. As long as you stay in three seconds, Risky. And, I, I well, like they're, they're all going to pit on that 23, aren't they? But Yes. Um, oh, stop it's burning your ERS. Open. Stop burning your ERS. Really it's so fine. frustrating to watch this. Because Ben Shaw, he's now starting to save his up again. You gotta think about this. You're in Monza. When you get an DRS and you use it, it'd be impossible to defend it. You gotta have something to defend with. And Arnold as well. I do want to keep an eye on him because um, I mean he has got pace, but he needs a safety car here. I don't. I, he hasn't used a safety car stop Owen, So well, that's what I'm saying. You'll you need a safety yeah, car because he'll be straight in. Without it though, I don't really think he's got a chance to win the race. He's just ben. too far back. Ben to the inside of, of, of Ben he's Harrett. Used and he's, he's used yeah, DRS. He's used DRS doing that. They both have. 
But this is the last lap of stage two. So at the end of the next lap, we're going to see all the pit stops coming into play. Like I say, it's a very rare situation we have this in Jet Car, where the second stop comes as late in the race as this. But it was drivers who chose it. They didn't know what track it was going to be for, of course. But uh, when you're picking a stage in the 20s, there's always a risk this sort of thing can happen. No. It says not many. Oh, it's M oh. Michael Borners. Oh, oh, that's contact. That was an accident ready to happen. Yeah, but he's he's doing well. I don't know if he was trying to let him through there. It was a little bit of a, a frustrating little brake check there as he came back on track. M Michael Borners. He was certainly not interested in accelerating out of that corner. And uh, Jamie Griffiths will be all over the back of him again. I just want to make sure this doesn't end in an airplane crash because I don't think M K Borners. They're not both of them aren't happy with each other. And they oh, are. They're, 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 you're not meant to do Safety that. Safety car could happen here. Safety car could happen here. You've got to be. Keeping your eye on this if you're anyone else in this race as uh, Pete comes through and that should oh, he's separate them. Early. Oh, he's not with the pit now. He, he, he lost the race win. Well, that's going to make this interesting then because nearly into the DRS range, these two have been DRSing each other up to the back of Risky. It's Ben and Ben, and they're going to be within DRS possibly on this lap, and it's going to be a race into the pits. Now, Corey is going to come out into the sixth place, but... Oh, he'll, still need to stop, he'll still need to stop again. I'm sure someone's, someone surely is going to tell him. But he did Did he even pick up the stage point? He didn't even get the stage point, did he? I think it Risky was, picked it, it, it up. It, 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 was, it was Risky that picked up the stage point, because literally, I'll need to do a VAR check at the end of the stream, but Look at this. Stands. We've got the two Bens practically pushing Ooh. each other through the first Lesmo. I think they know it's serious now, don't they? Because I think they've realised that Corey's made a massive mistake. I, ah, yellow's night. Someone's off. Jacko's off. Not going to be a problem. He's not damaged the car. And Ben Shaw is going to come through. He'll win the race into the pits. Now, I think the two Bens, they share a pit box. That's why they're racing this hard. So one of these two is going to fall out. Or mm. one of them's going to have to keep going. And that one will surely have to be Ben Harrett. Because... You lose more time by stacking than you do by going one more lap. But will they remember that they're stacking? I'm not sure they will. Here comes Risky. 1.5 seconds clear to the pits. He's broken super early though. He's broken super early into the pits. He lost time doing that. And the two Bens, I'm sure of it, are going to have to stack. And Ben Harrett is going to be kicking himself because this is going to cost him a good 5-10 seconds. Arnold retakes the lead of the race. If he gets a safety car, he's into the box seat to win this race. And Risky comes out. He will be in front of Ben Shaw. And he's looking for his first win of the season. Risky's looking to keep up the winning streak of new winners oh every gosh. season. That is Jacko in front of him. Hopefully Jacko gets out of his way. No if, no yeah. ignoring your blue flags this time, mate. This is not the time. Yeah, this yeah, this is not the time to do so. And if Risky wins this race, he could he could do the he could be the uh, the join the the club of drivers who got the streak of winning in Kia and and Cup in the same week. I can't remember how many drivers have done so. I'll need to ask Jacko for that stat. But Jacko's off again. Be, yeah, Jacko, speaking of Jacko, he is off again. He's so, making sure he's not going to get involved. I think he's worked out that that's for the race win. And ERS levels. Risky has more at the minute. If I'm Risky, I'm just keeping this ERS and having something to fight with on the last lap because Ben Shaw is using so he can close up into DRS. Ben Harrett is six and a half seconds behind all this. That's what you lose by stacking. I'm amazed he didn't remember because... ah. Oh, He'll be so frustrated because it's... He wouldn't be as annoyed if it wasn't Risky, the man in front of him. But it is Risky in front of him. Now, oh, what's Casper going to do? Casper's decided to stay out. He's really looking for this last second safety car. But it's not happening at the moment. Ooh. I'm just trying to think if you got the... Um, the... La the... the the le the ledger lap. I'm just trying to look on the stream. It was quite cutting it well, fine there. Well, he'll probably lead this lap. He's got enough of a gap even if he picks. Maybe Adam. Well, he'll lead this one. Now, both drivers fighting for this win use their ERS on the main straight. The thing is here, both of these drivers haven't won a race this season, which is very odd to say about Ben Shaw. You would expect him to be on a couple of wins at this stage, which means he can't just give this win away. He has to fight for it. Because he doesn't really know if he'll ever get a chance at this again. He currently sits at the bottom of the round of eight. He's miles off. It's practically a must-win this for him. So he has to go for it. 
But will he risk it against his own teammate? This is a bizarre situation. I don't think he would ever expect to find himself in. Risky keeps using ERS to defend. It's too early for that. We're only on lap 25. Do you let your teammate free and attack him on the last lap? How are they going to play this? I have absolutely no point. idea. This is going to be a tactical race to the end. And I think... I think Ben Shaw is going to surely take the lead at the start of the next lap. Yellows for that something in the middle sector. Not entirely flag. sure. Oh, it's a car off. It's Jake again. And he comes back onto track. He's hit another car. And what should have been a win for him today, or at least a top five, has absolutely fell apart. Here we go. Ben is going to hold on. He's going to wait for the final lap. That's the tactics playing into this. And Risky, his heart will be sinking in saying that. He's going to have to really get his elbows out on the final lap. But he knows now. Don't use any ERS. The guy's waiting for the last lap. Or are we going to see these two slow each other down? Are we going to see some DRS chicken? We know these races at Monza. They always go down to the last lap. And if I'm risky, I'm letting my teammate through at the Parabolica. This is possibly going to become very slow, these two. This is a track where Team Speed like to uh, play DRS chicken in a way as well. But I, I, I know Risky would want to win. But Ben is at the bottom of the of the playoffs at the moment. I think I think I, I'm I'm gonna hate myself for this. Is it wrong? I think Risky on the final lap is gonna let Ben. Shaw I think that's through. crazy. I think that's crazy. He's he's fighting for his own championship five no, place, Jess. I know, I know, I know, I know. But obviously, Risky is lead, is gonna lead the chase after tonight. And um, whereas Ben 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 Shaw, oh, I, I, well, obviously Gareth Jake is near the bottom. But uh, uh, but is that. That will make Kieran a threat. So uh, well, that's why I think let's what see. happened. But uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Final lap coming up. I think Ben Shaw is going to take the lead. But it's about if Risky uses any ERS. He's not going to. So the chase begins now for him. He's got to basically follow him and pass him into the chicane. Is that Gareth coming out of the pits? Oh, he's out of the race, isn't he? Oh! Risky's hit the back there. Who's that coming out of the pits? It's Quinn. They'll probably catch him, you know. Or is he going to let them through? But definitely big contact when Risky hit the back of his teammate. Was there damage caused? I really hope not, but it was a pretty damn big hit. Nothing cosmetic, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's no damage. Ben Shaw is going to get DRS here. And I think Risky's heart will sink at that. I think that's pretty much going to decide the race. So uh, Quinn, coming out of the pits. Of course, I'm sure he didn't know he was going to affect the race, but he has. And so Ben Shaw... He'll be able to sprint away with that now. And the man who sits at the bottom of the uh, the playoff standings of the top eight is going to find himself probably winning the race, unless there's a late twist. But I don't see any reason for him to let his teammate through. I didn't see any reason for Risky to let him through either. They both need the win. But Ben Shaw, he is going to qualify for the round of six as he comes around the final corner the reigning champion who hasn't seen the checkered flag first once all season is gonna see it now ben shaw becomes the first repeat winner in monza risky finishes second once again this season another strong race for him arnold comes home in third he jumped ben harrett who like i say He'll be ruining the fact that he let Ben Shaw pass him on his in-lap and then didn't realise that he was going to have to stack with him. I think that's a missed opportunity there for him today. Casper mm. comes home in fifth position. Fastest lap as well. Corey in sixth. If only... Well, he's going to get in trouble, isn't he? Because he didn't actually make his second mandatory start. So hold Corey the line on that. That will be him disqualified, which means that the top two in the championship don't score today which is something you really wouldn't have expected to say coming into this. Khalifa didn't lead a lap or anything. Corey, I don't know if he'll get his points for laps there, but he's he's not going to be yeah, classified. He's, he still does. He he'll still does, because I remember in Spain, um, someone forgot to pit, and they got disqualified, but they did get a point for a playoff point for leading a lap. Well, he'll not be classified today, that's for sure. And uh, Kieran comes home in seventh. Uh, Wace in eighth place. Yuri, ninth. No front win on his car, so just not the best day for him. Pete in 10th, Jordan 11th, uh, Jamie Griffiths in 12th, Jake 13th, terrible day for him, Quinn's going to come home 14th, NK Bourne's already 15th, Baz is 16th for Jacko, 17th for your retirements, Khalifa, Leroy and Gareth, but let's say we are expecting a disqualification for uh, for Corey, because he pitted on lap 22, he should have pitted from lap 23 onwards, 
as Pete gets given the driver of the day by the game. Interesting decision. I, we didn't see much of Pete, Pete nah. at all that race, to be honest. The only thing I can remember was Pete seeing him off the track, to be honest with you. But, hey, well. Yeah. Well, Corey says he made three stops. Obviously, he came out with a big gap um, to... Corey did it. Corey did a safe. Corey did a safety car stop. We're at say, the beginning. I think he's saying he, he made a third stop after lap twenty-two. Obviously, I was going to say he came up with a somewhat big gap to Kieran, but we're going to have to. I, I'll let you do the VAR on this while I confirm the results I, again. I, I will check. Because <laughs> well, I'm not. I don't recall seeing him cover the pits again. But I suppose I wasn't paying attention. He, no, to be fair, he was twenty and a half seconds behind, wasn't he? So maybe he uh, did so make. He, so he, so, so yeah. he might, he might have done. He might have I, done. I, I will do, I will do a VAR check while you go through the standings. Yes. Hold on a second. So we'll have Corey might actually get his points then. So Ben Shaw wins from Risky second, Arnold third, Ben Harrett fourth, Casper fifth, Corey sixth, Kieran seventh, Wes eighth, Yuri ninth, and Pete tenth. Jordan eleventh, Jimmy Griffiths in twelfth, Jake thirteenth, Quinn fourteenth, N.K. Bourne fifteenth. Baz at a lap down in 16th. Jacko, probably multiple laps. No, just a one lap. Sorry, Jacko. In uh, 17th, and then the retirements. I say Khalifa had a brake failure. Leroy, who had connection issues, and Garp, who was wiped out before he even got to the first corner. So Corey did four, uh, had four lap tyres at the end when he came across the line. Well, he might have used tyres he'd used before, like his qualifying tyre or something, perhaps. That's no, what... the, yeah, it still it still said zero laps. I'm just I don't because I don't remember him pitting. Because I would have said on stream if he pitted. Yeah, but how does he end up twenty two and a half seconds behind him though? Do you oh, know what I mean? yeah, he did pit. He did, yeah. he did pit. He's fine. So he he'll be fine there. So sorry about that, Corey. But you 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 will be fine. And uh, yeah, Ben Harrett confirming now in the chat he didn't realise that he was teammates with Ben. Uh, ben Shaw, Ben Shaw saying he learned they were teammates on stop one. That's, again, probably why he went for the move at the end of the lap he was due to pit on. So that's what won him that race today. It was very good tactics there from Ben Shaw to remember who his teammate was and to know he uh, had to get in front of him before the pit stop. So good stuff there. And it's a good way to win your first race of the season. I said going into this, it's weird to see him not with a win at this stage of the season. It's not champion's form, but perhaps he'll be able to take that forward now into the rest of the season and uh, get something That's good out of it. I, I, I did say Ben Shaw was a, is going to make the championship wide open in the playoffs because guess who's had horrific races today? Jake O'Sullivan, Kieran as well, and Gareth. Listen, Watch Garth. out for those three in three weeks' time. Yeah, Garth is left as well. Garth is pretty much out of it. Although I still think I think Kieran's through basically. Um, he's too far ahead of Garth. I mean, he, he's gained positions on Jake. Jake just had an awful race today, and I'll see Ben Shaw. He's through. Khalifa, He's through. Corey probably through himself. Actually, as is. Right, we'll, we'll confirm it all later on. But a lot of these guys are in pretty comfortable positions actually. But. Uh, yeah. We'll see how it all works out, but um, I believe we shall uh, end it there before we get uh, too confused with things. And we do have a two-week break coming up, so uh, we'll have plenty of time to work everything out. I can't tell you where we're going to be next time out, because it's a mystery calendar, as you all know. So, uh, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed the race tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Jess, for being in the comms box. You're better than Jerko. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for having me, Owen. It was nice to commentate once again, and uh, we will we will hopefully see you and Jacko in three weeks' time. Yeah, well, that's the idea. Hopefully, so uh, hold this space. We should we shall return for round fourteen of the Jacko Cup series, where we decide who our six drivers going through to the round of six are, and butchering this. I'm going to end the stream now. Thank you for watching, <laughs> and safe travels, everybody.